Stroke, can you explain what a tough test and opportunity, measuring stick, et cetera, that this game is for your team? Yeah, we're, we're super excited for the challenge. We know we got a really good football team coming in in all three phases. Coach Sark has done a really good job with the program. Um, and, you know, on offense, they present challenges because the way he calls the game and what he does is creativity, is rhythm. Obviously, they have a really great quarterback. Uh, skill players, fast everywhere. Uh, running back is really good. I know they got the other two that got hurt, but uh, the running back they have now is really good too. And the O line is as good as you'll see in the country. So uh, I know our defense is excited for the challenge to go against them. And offensively, their defense played very well. Um, sound, not very many mistakes. Uh, I think they have four returning starters on defense, and they have guys that have played. So uh, super excited for Saturday. Going back and looking at film from the, this past game of your team, what, what do you feel like you learned? It seemed like you did a lot of early substitutions and j just different things that maybe we wouldn't see um, in bigger games. So what, what kind of did you see from your team? Yeah, you saw uh, guys weren't scared of the, of the big stage. Obviously a great atmosphere in the big house, but uh, I think players played extremely hard offensively. Uh, we got a rhythm at the end of the game, really felt the, the, the line gelling, um, got a rhythm of everything going on. I thought uh, offensively they definitely picked it up there, got things to clean up as we always will, and uh, run game technique, fundamentals. Uh, it's, it's the tale of ten guys, and you got one guy that doesn't do his job, and then the play fails. So we got to continue to get better at that, but we will this week. We'll, we're going to put our hard hat on and we're going to work our tails off this week to have a great week of prep. And I thought defensively they flew around. They were violent. They were physical. Had a lot of fun. Um, big thing there, we got to clean up. We just got to be stable emotionally. We had that one drive where we had a couple of penalties that can go either way, but we can't have them. So for us, we're going to eliminate those and just play our style of football. On the right, Ryan. What do you think people or fans should know about Davis Warren that they might not just watch him on the field? I mean, talk about a fighter. Uh, had leukemia, had cancer. Um, senior year was canceled because of COVID. Came here as a walk-on. He's been a third-string guy since since he's been here. A backup. Every week, you know, co the coaches do a test. He'd always do his test. He'd have 100 on his test. He'd always fill it out exactly right. He's always taking notes. He's always doing the right thing. He's the first guy to come in the building and say, "Hey, coach." Um, there's a kid at Mott Children's Hospital that wants to come to practice. Can he come? I'll be like, yeah, don't ever ask me that again. Just bring him. Uh, he's selfless, a phenomenal teammate. Orgy threw the touchdown, and he's running toward the end zone to celebrate. So he's the ultimate team guy and uh, guy you want as your quarterback. All right, Andrew. You know, you don't like talking about yourself, but given where you play college, uh, have you heard from any former teammates or do you expect to about this game? Yeah, I mean, that's... I'm just ready to win because we're at Michigan. Uh, you know, I'm sure there'll be calls at some point, but that stuff doesn't matter. It's all about us. It's about the Wolverines this weekend. All right, now, given that you have such a marquee opponent so early in the season, there's a little bit less time to work out those like early season kinks. How do you adapt to playing like, the big game so soon? Yeah, I think it's exciting for our players, for the program, for the fans, everything. Uh, you want these type of games. You want these atmospheres. You want these um, building blocks to help you mold your team and, and really get, get where you need to be. So for us, it's just about the preparation this week. You know, we start today. We get the players in today. We're going to make sure we evaluate the film hard. I know got a lot of guys came in yesterday already watched it on their own, and they've watched it on their iPads. But for us, it's about the preparation this week, about doing what we can to go win every day. Is it any different from, like, when you play Ohio State in Week 12 versus playing Texas in Week 2 in preparation? Uh, no, the preparation's not any different. You just, you're going to be a different team week two than you are week three. You're going to be a different team week one than you're week two. So for us, it's just about our mindset of it's another big game and it's a big game because we're in it and uh, big game because we're in the big house. So super stoked for it. Front here, Dennis. Sure, when you guys scored that last touchdown, was there a thought of going for two there to go up 14 instead of kicking the extra point? Yeah, there was initially. And then, um, just said, you know what? Let's just let's just kick the field goal. Knew our defense is is uh, rolling pretty well, so felt pretty good about the defense. But yeah, there was a thought about that. How about that final drive? You probably talked about it. Does it give you guys a boost when you go in today? When you see the six out of seven runs and culminated with a touchdown pass there, that had feel pretty good. Yeah, felt good. I think 
we felt like we were moving the ball. I mean, we had drives of like 10 plays, nine plays, nine plays, just got to get in the end zone. And when you feel, when you have that consistent rhythm, when you finally get the ball in the end zone, that's definitely going to build some confidence for the players and especially guys that haven't played a lot of football. Um, but it, it really helped the confidence and really built some good momentum. All right, Aaron, speaking of Davis, it's been four or five years since he last started the game. How do you think he handled Saturday just the moment? Yeah, he was great. I mean, eyes weren't too big. He was super calm. He was in the moment, play at a time. So he, he did great. Anthony? But you played a lot of guys at wide receiver on Saturday. Is that a product of what you guys feel like you have depth-wise, or are you looking to pare that down at all? No, we're, we'll definitely play as many guys as we can, keep them fresh and keep them rolling. Uh, Texas. Uh, has a bunch of uh, transfers at wide receiver. What do you see from them as a group? Any of them uh, specifically stand out to you? I mean, they're all fast. They're all playmakers. Bond we played last year, um, who's, a, who's a great playmaker. Sure, our guys are familiar with him, obviously, in a different scheme, doing different things, but he's a really good playmaker. Uh, they've got a transfer from Oregon State and Houston. Um, the big thing that stands out is their speed, their ability to separate. And uh, I think Sark does a really good job of just putting them in position to, to showcase their talent. So. For us, it's going to be doing everything we can to contain those guys. Back left, Austin. As a play caller, how would you describe a Steve Sarkeesian offense and what are some of the nuances of how he calls a game that you could appreciate? Yeah, I mean, he wants to run the football. Um, you know, people see the passing game, but ultimately he wants to run the football and do the things to control the clock and create a rhythm. You know, there's always a, there's a play and there's a play off of it. So, you know, you're going to see the play action. If there's a play, there's going to be a play action off of it and be able to help that. But he wants to keep his quarterback in rhythm, keep him in a clean pocket, and make sure that, that he's doing everything he can be, you know, at his highest skill set. Sam on the left, Chris. How much more do you think the, the passing game the receivers have to give? It seemed like you guys left some things out there on the field. And so. Yeah, there's definitely some route detail things that we can get better at. And if we do that, I think we'll be in a good place. On the right over here, Chris Roshan. Sean, you mentioned some of the, the details of Warren's story. You make it a very, very compelling story. And obviously, you didn't and name him the starter because of his story. But how does that story, in your mind, relate to how he relates to the team and runs the huddle, commands the huddle? That's what yeah, I mean, just, I mean, he's fought as big as adversity as you can fight. So, you know, even throwing an interception, that's not a, <laughs> that doesn't compare to what he's been through in life. And for him, he just, he rolls on, he just attacks the next process. Um, doesn't blame, doesn't you know point fingers. He's really all about the team and doing whatever he can to help the team win. And the kid is just unbelievable off the field, on the field. You know he's in here studying countless hours, doing what he needs to do to be great. But uh, you know the, the players just they grow, they're, they're, they really grow towards him, and they really have even more after this whole year. How do you expect both of the quarterbacks that you played Saturday to to grow in their enhanced roles as these early weeks go by? I think you only get better at playing it by doing it. So the experience of Warren's, you know, Davis starting and Orgy playing a little bit more uh, is just going to give them more confidence that, yeah, I can do it and I can do it in an elite stage and just continue what they've done in practice because. You know, what they've done against our defense, if they can do it against our defense, they can do it against anybody. So for them to just continue to have that confidence uh, throughout the week of preparation is going to be huge. Stay on the left there, Clayton. Josiah had that two-play stretch where he played both guys on the read option and then blew up the, the screen play the next mm -hmm. play. Where has he grown the most, and how does his versatility help you guys? I mean, he's an animal. Uh, I would say he's just grown because he's just gotten stronger. He knows the defense even more. But he just plays with fanatical effort. You know, he, he watch, you watch him one play during the fourth quarter, he gets a sack, and then he drops in coverage and then stops the screen on the other side of the field. So the guy just plays with incredible effort. He's got an incredible attitude, work ethic, and he's everything you'd want. All right here, Charles. Do you have an update on Jack Tuttle's status? And what do you expect his role to be once he is able to get back to full strength? Yeah, uh, he's just working through some things, and uh, he'll be back throwing here even more and, and be in a good place. So we'll see whenever he gets when he gets back. Charles and Sean, a couple days removed. How would you evaluate the offensive line play? Yeah, uh, never where you want it to be. And I think it's probably, you know, it's definitely got to get better. Uh, but I thought the attitude, I thought the strain was there. 
the details and the technique have to continue to get better. And that's a product of your first game as an offensive line. And even the first years, last year, the year before that, before I'd say the exact same thing. I went back and watched the past three years and first games and watched the second games. And it looks like two different lines. So I expect those guys to be a lot better. I know Coach Newsom will, will coach them really hard this week. And as far as Alex, I mean, how do you envision his role? Will it be more than you know, going to one play? <coughs> we'll see. And wh why didn't he win the job? What, what was the difference there? I mean, ultimately, Davis just, you know, he just practiced better. Uh, overall, completion percentage was a little higher and made more plays against our defense. And uh, Orgy didn't just completely lose it, but I think Davis just took it and won it. Yeah, not, not that it was a surprise, but in the opener, obviously, Colston was, was the featured player. But, I mean, obviously, based on what he did, I mean, Texas will probably you know, try to do everything to stop him. I mean, what, what, what answers do you have in case that does happen where they, they really try to bracket him and, and kind of try to take him out of the game? Yeah, we'll go on to the next read. We got a lot of other weapons, so you take away him, then you have to deal with Samaj and Tyler Morris and Kendrick Bell and, and Marlon and, and the run game. So I uh, can't take away at all. All right, yeah, Aaron. Speaking of the old line, you pulled Dom at one point in the first quarter. Was that just a teaching moment for him? No, the decision we made pre-game, pre we're going to play both him and Crip. So, um, you know, keep, keep competing. Everybody's always competing. Everybody's seen it through the years. Just because you're the starter one game doesn't mean you're the starter the next game. So we, the competitive atmosphere is the best. So everybody has a chance to go compete. How do you think Dom did? He did well for his first game as starter uh, at center. Got some communication things to clean up and protection. But pretty dang good. Obviously, Will Johnson put the exclamation point on the game. But where do you think he grew the most this summer and was able to implement that Saturday? Yeah, I think he grew as a leader. Just because he's, you know, he played at such a young age, played as a freshman, played as a sophomore, but then you saw him grow as a as a leader off the field, and really his work ethic is, you know, you see it on the field. Like the dude, just I would be in my office in the summer, and he'd be out there working out, doing extra stuff, him, all the other DBs, and and you can see him, and he's calculated in the film room. Like he almost had two other picks, and it's because he works so hard in what he does. But that's you know growth of of what he does is really what you saw. Donovan Edwards always seems to be better when he's playing confident, and maybe he didn't have the game he wanted to do with the, the first game. Right? So how do you instill and maintain that confidence, even though maybe Colel kind of had more opportunities in, in the first game? Yeah, I think Donovan had 11, Colel had 15, and if Donovan doesn't get one of them called back, you know, he's got more yardage. Um, so all those things will they'll happen for him. He's he's a confident kid and uh, we know he's a really good player and he showed up in big moments for us so not worried about his confidence. What makes Mulling so good on kick right now? He did a good job running the ball obviously but yeah. kick returns he you look at him as a runner he's more about a guy that's going to run you over. What what does he have that skill set in the return game? Well one he's got great vision. First he catches it really cleanly and uh, but he's got great vision on how blocks develop, which is kind of like a running back, and it runs super hard and physical, obviously being 220-something pounds and running that fast uh, makes it an advantage for you. So he's done a really good job in the offseason of, of developing those skill set. He always had them, but just being more consistent with it. And with uh, Donovan, is it something you got to be patient with? He's like close to, we've seen all the big games where he's had all the explosive plays. you feel like he's close to? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a couple runs there. It's one person here, one thing there, and those things are close, so um, we'll get there. Back right, Brian? Yeah, I mean, Fresno obviously made uh, some headway in, in the fourth quarter. How did you feel the defense held up stamina-wise? I mean, I think, uh, you know, kind of then Mason played for over 40 snaps, uh, which I think is more than what they typically played last year. I mean, how did you feel like those guys, especially the defensive line, held up? At the Pretty good. The Pretty good. I mean, they had like four rushing yards, so I think the stamina wasn't a, really an issue. 